on this initial go around because of the criteria and the discounts that were offered and so on they chose a, a zenith personal computer and also a texas instruments com personal computer and they're part of a generic family that that was one, that was the only real strong criteria we had was that we wanted these systems to fit into that very popular environment and then beyond that, we got into matters, uh, as Art indicated, of price and, and availability and all these kinds of things. We here at the university are not particularly concerned about the data that they might steal out of a computer. Welcome to Iowa edition, and we're going to be talking about computers. 1983 will undoubtedly go down as the year when Christmas was associated with two things, Cabbage Patch dolls and the small home computer, which suddenly came within the price range of many families, and maybe yours is one of them. We're going to be talking about a project that is on a much grander scale but is occurring at Iowa State University and with gentlemen who are involved in what we're going to call the computerization of the campus. These are our guests who will be talking about computers and hopefully answering questions that you have. Professor Claire Maple. Professor Maple is professor of mathematics, professor of computer science, and director of the Iowa State University Computation Center. Dr. Terry Smay is professor of electrical engineering at Iowa State University, and that has officially been changed. And if we could have fit it in, we would have included the fact that it is now electrical and computer engineering right. at Iowa State. Dr. Arthur Poem is professor of electrical and computer engineering at Iowa State. Uh, Dr. Poem is also the Anson Marston Distinguished Professor of Engineering. Now that we've credentialed you and scared everyone to death, let's reassure them in saying that you are going to understand this program about computers because if I understand it, you will understand it. Trust me. It sounds so ridiculous to talk about the computerization of the Iowa State University campus. Those who have been here through the years would say that that happened a long time ago. Uh, Dr. Maple, tell us about uh, uh, Yeah, I think that's right. It did happen a long time ago. Uh, Iowa State being a technical school has always been interested in computing. And in fact, the first electronic computer was invented on this campus, as you well know. With uh, Mr. Adonatsov and the recognition that he has received for his work with right. the first computer. Uh -huh. All right. Well, now, when uh, the microcomputer started uh, coming along, uh, we at Iowa State began looking at how that might fit within our uh, instructional scheme here on the campus. And uh, so what we are doing now is an experiment to try to find out how these uh, microcomputers might fit within the framework of what the students have to learn here. Dr. Smay, I've talked with you before, and I know that one of the things that, that concerns you about the average person approaching computers is the jargon. Microcomputer, home computer, personal computer. Uh, what are we talking about? Well, I think you're right. There's a lot of talk about intimidation and computer anxiety and that sort of thing, and much of that seems to stem from concern about this peculiar terminology. We've had a number of efforts around here uh, based on the use of videotape technology and one thing and another to try to uh, overcome some of that anxiety. I guess the way we've tried to do it is to relate some of these terms. We've tried to minimize the terms as much as we can and tried to relate some of them, the ones we think are important and, and have to be faced up to, to familiar concepts. And, and we think we've been pretty successful doing that. And uh, uh, I think that's the answer. You need to relate the, the, the funny sounding words to the sorts of things people understand and, and, and know they want to do. And uh, we've been pretty, pretty uh, lucky in that regard, I think. But the kind of computers that we're talking about in the computerization of the campus are the kind of computers that our viewers may have That's found right. in the Christmas tree. I, I think the word, to me, the word personal, uh, an aspect uh, designation of personal computers is the best way to think about it because it either means it's a computer that you personally have total control of and additionally may even own, may even have bought with your own money. And it's the fact that you 
you have that in your possession and its resources are available to you personally and while you're using it at least to nobody else. And it's that new aspect of computerization, I think, that we're really talking about here. Now, Dr. Palm, you are the uh, head of the microcomputer instructional experiment that's growing out of all of this. Now, what does this involve? Let me make a few preliminary comments first. One of the motivations for doing this is to try and make it as effective a use of all the facilities on campus. And this, of course, includes the computers that students might buy. If students bring in many, many ver different varieties, you have a problem of compatibility between all these different tools. So one of the motivation for the equipment and the experiments is to try and standardize on a few that we can support and the students can make effective use of. So as part of this experiment, the center has established five laboratories of 25 personal computers in which they'll try and put classroom material, have students go through classes exploiting the use of these tools, and hopefully provide some standard devices that they could choose to buy if in fact it was in, they, they found that they wanted to do that. A number of the deans, for example, find parents call up and, and want to know whether their student should buy a personal computer and if so, what type. So our experiments are really designed to try and answer in what situation that might be an advisable thing to do. Is the day approaching when a student who comes to Iowa State is going to come with his or her own computer? I could give you my personal view that probably a, a third of the students might come with their own personal computer. It may make economic sense for some and not for others. So depending upon their curricula and what they intend to do with it, I think it's very likely they'll buy their own. And in other areas, I, I don't think they will, that they'll use university facilities. Professor Maple, what is happening on other university campuses? Uh, many of the universities following the same general path that, that we're following. I think uh, they see the advantages of these personal computers being very useful in making the student more efficient. Now, usually we don't care much about how the student spends his time, but it's impossible to actually stretch the curriculum for a student, so we've got to find out some way to make him more efficient in his learning. And it's quite possible that the personal computer will be a tool which will enable us to do that. This personal computer will enable him to do things now in a much shorter time than he was able to do before. It'll also give him access to databases, which might take him hours or even days in a library to find. And various things of that nature make, through the use of the personal computer, will make uh, various types of activities uh, readily available to him or weren't otherwise. One can understand how a student who was going to study computer science would need, perhaps, uh, a personal computer. What about some of the students in, in the other areas of the university? Well, it's surprising how uh, the uh, personal computer is a thing that just creeps into almost every neighborhood. Uh, for example, you don't think of an English student maybe being interested in computing, but you'd be surprised at how many English students already have their own computers and are using them for word processing in particular to write their themes. But it isn't restricted just to English. A person writing a theme in history could also use a microcomputer. Uh, a per person in psychology maybe rigged up an experiment which maybe has a data gathered off by means of a personal computer. Various activities like this are going on right now. Is it actually going to be part of the requirement for the educated person to survive and to include in that definition of, of educated uh, literacy with the com uh, computer literacy? I, I, I would say, you know, you can, you can probably get carried away uh, w with a statement along those lines, but I would say that it's, it's uh, fair to say that that's going to be considered a, a standard skill for... Uh, for the average person working in any one of uh, almost any number of disciplines to, to have some knowledge of, and, and literacy, I think, is a good word to describe that. Going to back to what Claire said a moment ago, uh, I think it's important to realize that the computer science students or computer engineering students and those in those areas you might think of as being described as computer experts aren't necessarily the best people to relate what computers 
will do or should be allowed to do or what can be applied to in things like home economics or design or various scientific disciplines. That's the reason this experiment involves a dispersal of these computers out into these areas of application and I think the imagination of the people out there in relating to what the computer can do to what they need done is where, the, where these ideas are really going to blossom. Is there uh, going to be? If I may add ahead, here, yes. uh, uh, this concept of uh, uh, literacy is actually changing due to the fact that there's computers around now. Usually we think of a literate person as one who can read and write. But I think uh, in the future you think of a literate person who could not only read and write, but he has to be able to handle a computer at the same time. Uh, Dr. Palm, Dr. Palm, we um, were talking about uh, computer literacy, and I didn't give you a chance to comment on it, the importance in the future. I like to use the expression of tool users and tool makers. If we look at a computer as an information processing tool, as it becomes less expensive and more pervasive, it just becomes an almost universal tool for doing a lot of things. And I think it's important for people to know that you don't have to know how to design the tool, but just how to use it. We like the example of an automobile. A great many people use the automobile. It's a tool of transportation, and yet they're not specialists in repairing or building an auto. The same thing is going to happen with regard to computers. The important thing is to know how to use it as a tool, because it's a very powerful one. As you said, uh, the people who are using the tool in various areas are going to need specific programs or software to make possible those uses that they have. Does that mean that most people are going to have to know how to do programming so they can write the specific programs that they need? Dr. Smith? Uh, the answer to your I think you have to differentiate carefully between programming a computer and writing programs for a computer. Differentiate for me. You program a computer. There's a man named uh, Peter McWilliams who has a best-selling series of books. I like his description. He says you program a computer by picking up a disk and sticking it in a computer and saying go. And then you program the computer. So we're going to have to know how to do that. Everybody's going to have to know how to do that. But when it comes to writing those programs, uh, I, I think as a general rule, you should write programs or contract to have programs written for you only in those cases where there aren't already programs available that you can use. And, and of course, uh, there's a huge industry right now churning out these kind of programs. I, I think that's what turns many people off on computers. They say, I don't want to learn how to write those programs. And the point is, I don't think they have to. There will be people who are interested in doing that. It's sort of like people that tune up their own cars, to use Art's analogy. You go ahead and tune up your own car if you want to. But if you don't want to, go find somebody to tune it up for you. And I think the same thing's true here. Is one of the goals of this whole experiment and this attempt to computerize the campus or investigate what it means to make a certain compatibility between uh, the software programs that are available for the, the different uh, types of computers? Sure, sure, sure. That's, that's, a, that's a problem, of course. Software compatibility, hardware compatibility, service compatibility. You need a huge service organization with parts and repair, people trained in repair and the like. All those sorts of things orient you toward uh, a, a limited number of systems so that you don't have to be able to deal with everything under the sun. So you have come to looking in the eye the uh, issue of what computers to recommend? Yes. And who blinked? What? Do uh <laughs> <laughs> you want to answer that, Claire? Go ahead. Well, one of the problems, of course, associated with the university is that we're not in position to support every brand of uh, mm -hmm. computer that's made. And so part of the project here is to select those that we feel like are appropriate for our use by the students and faculty and then get ourselves rigged up into a position where we can support those things. Now, by supporting those things, we mean that we need to be able to offer help to the faculty and students on their own selection of their own personal computer. Uh, we have actually set up places where they can come and try out a few of the computers, a uh, few of the brands that are available, not all of them by any means, because there's very many of them. Uh, but we have their software that they can try and see if it actually does the thing that they expect it to do. And we have people there that can answer their questions about uh, these computers and software and where they might, uh, and find out prices and various things like that. That's very important because uh, 
the campus as, <coughs> as of right now is fairly uh, new in this game. Uh, now, once a person decides he wants to buy a computer, then he really wants to look someplace to support that computer too. And so we're in also in the process of, of getting um, in the position of being able to uh, say to that person, if your computer breaks, bring it back, we'll fix it. Uh, or if it happens to be a professor or a student that has something going on in the laboratory, which he would like to uh, have his data gathered instead of by hand by a computer, he can come to us and we'll maybe help him interface that uh, experiment he has to a, a computer and enable him to gather uh, his data maybe around the clock instead of just sitting there with paper and pencil and not having to take time out for coffee breaks there was. The University of Iowa made uh, front page news uh, with the Des Moines Register not too long ago uh, when some of the computer dealers charged that they were in effect in competition with the dealers or, or cutting out local computer uh, stores and that kind of thing. How are you avoiding that charge? Uh, this is the same, uh, same problem you run across in almost any product the university buys. Uh, in a particular instance, we are working with the local dealers to be sure that they're in the picture so that the uh, actual money that might change hand between a given individual that buys a computer and uh, uh, the computer company actually goes through the dealer rather than through the university. Dr. Pohm, what are the computers that you're using in your experimental classes? First, let me comment on how this decision was made. Actually, uh, Terry Smee chaired the committee that was responsible for this selection. They essentially tried to find systems that would best meet, meet the needs of the students in the university. And it's a two-tier decision. They've decided to do a preliminary decision for this first experimental phase and may be modified later. On this initial go-around, because of the criteria and the discounts that were offered and so on, they chose a, a Zenith personal computer and also a Texas Instruments com personal computer. And they're part of a generic family, and you might want to ask Terry that same question since uh, he, I'll do that. He bore <laughs> a lot of responsibility. I'll give you the same answer. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, the IBM personal computer is, is one that is ex extremely popular and, and uh, it's one of the dominant systems and it has defined a, a so-called uh, operating system environment into which many manufacturers are bringing computers. We, and uh, there may be 50 or 100 such systems that, that uh, would fall into that general so-called IBM uh, compatible or as the, uh, the slang goes, IBM clones. Uh, and these two systems that we have uh, uh, finally uh, adopted as the experimental units fall into that family of systems. They are IBM compatible, which you have to put kind of quotation marks around because compatibility is kind of a fuzzy word. But that, that, was one, that was the only real strong criteria we had, was that we wanted these systems to fit into that very popular environment. And then beyond that, we got into matters, uh, as Art indicated, of price and, and availability and all these kinds of things. So we're not talking about the $49 computer kind of deal when no, we're talking no. here? No, we're talking uh, something around $2,000, a little less than $2,000 at the bottom end, and then if, if uh, features are added, uh, the systems we're probably getting for the experiment are, are in the $2,200 range, something like that. We're aware that one of the popular movies during 1983 was War Games, and uh, uh, computers were used by young computer users to gain access to uh, very security-sensitive uh, computers. We know that there are many major computers on this campus. Are you at all concerned about the dangers that may come from all of these other computers being available now and attempted access or sabotage or uh, getting materials that should not be available to everyone? Well, I think uh, security is a, is a problem in any computer environment. Uh, we here at the university are not particularly concerned about the data that they might steal out of a computer because it usually the data that's involved in the uh, research and academic affairs are typically worthless to anybody except the user. Uh, uh, however, uh, there is a, 
about the only thing they can steal to any benefit to themselves would be the use of the computer itself. Uh, however, there are, in any large group of people, of course, uh, certain people who would like to destroy what other people have done, and so we have people that get in and try to, uh, to vandalize, so to speak, uh, somebody else's program, maybe through spite or just for fun, you know, because they... But you do not anticipate that this is a major concern? Uh, no, I don't think it's going to be a major concern. Uh, you've all read the stories about people getting into banks and transferring money to, say, the Swiss account with, uh, uh, to their benefit. That type of thing is not possible in our computers because we don't have those valuable assets uh, in the form of uh, I see. data. <laughs> well, nothing is perfect. Dr. Smay will continue this okay, discussion sure. when we continue with Iowa Edition after these messages. We've been talking about computers. Uh, Dr. Smay, tell us about some of the positive aspects of, of computer procurement. Yeah, getting back a little earlier, uh, you made the comment about some of the controversy at the University of Iowa and potential controversy any place where you have public procurement and private procurement mixed up. We do have the dealer mechanism. The dealers providing our computers are making arrangements for faculty and staff to purchase computers with their own personal funds. And I'd like to just uh, make the comment that this seems to me to be a, a very positive act on the part of these people in that the great bulk of the usage of these systems is going to be on the job directed toward doing the job within the university the educational job or whatever more effectively and i see it in a way as as a very positive thing where these faculty and staff are are, are going to be enhancing the the properties and the performance of the university through these personal purchases and i i think that's something that shouldn't be overlooked well we thank you very much for telling us about the computerization of the campus and of giving us some tips about computers themselves. I want to thank you very much for being our guests, uh, Professor Claire Maple, Dr. Terry Smay, and Dr. Art Poem. And we want to thank you for being with us. And if you have a computer, good for you. If you're thinking about getting one, now may be the time. And we hope that you'll join us again next week at this same time for Iowa Edition. Bye-bye.